so we here at the Computex with the Shri, and uh, so we had the Cambrius room here at Computex. So yes. what is Cambrius? Um, Cambrius is a company that's going to be revolutionizing the whole touch industry as well as a few other display and other flexible display type industries. We make transparent conductors. So our material is silver nanowires. So this is literally a shipping product from our company. You can see that we have uh, uh, a bottle of what we call ink. Essentially it's a solution with silver nanowires in it. Um, to give you an understanding of uh, what silver nanowires are all about and why they are uh, the best choice for these transparent uh, conductors, let me explain with this uh, picture here. So as you know, touch screens are everywhere and there are going to be more touch screens and more devices. Right? So with touch screens, you want to have a layer that is conductive and therefore you want to have um, very good conduction on the uh, surface of the touch screen uh, with, a, uh, with a transparent conductor. But you also want light to come out. So typically you would put uh, a good conductor is a sheet of metal, but metal is opaque and it will block light. But we want light to come out, yet we want to have very good conductivity. So what Cambrios did was it invented this technology, uh, uh, silver nanowires with a product called Clearom. Essentially, they are um, very uh, small diameter uh, nanowires. Uh, they are uh, tens of nanometers in diameter. And they are a um, tens of uh, micrometers in length. So a very high aspect ratio, kind of like one is to thousand type aspect ratio. And you can see in this image that when they are laid out on the surface, they form a percolated network. And you have a lot of gap in between the wires. That's where the light will come out. And, uh, but the wires are all connected. And since they're made out of silver, silver being the best conductor, uh, best element uh, for, uh, conductivity, uh, we have a uh, pretty awesome performing product. It's better than gold. It is definitely better than gold uh, so far as uh, electrical conductivity so what does it is mean? concerned. Uh, previous touch panels were having covering the whole screen with some kind of metal? Yeah, indium tin oxide. So, indium, uh, ha uh, silver is about 100 times more conductive than indium. Now, also, indium uh, tin oxide, ITO as it's called, uh, it's typically has been in short supply in the last few years. Uh, also, it has many issues where uh, in larger type panels, you are not able to put uh, indium tin oxide on film. So if you don't put it on film, you have to put it on glass, which increases the thickness, it's heavier, so on and so forth. So in devices uh, where you need a film uh, for your uh, touch screen, a, a silver nanowire is a much better suited product than an Indian, Indian, Indian tin oxide. So you're getting rid of this whole, before it was not wires, it was just covering the whole... Yeah, there was material okay. that was coated, so these are sputter coated material. Very thin, but covering the whole part. Correct. With and indium, then something that's Indium rare. tin oxide. Is it rare? It is a rare... Uh, Where did they uh, find this? Uh, it's, most of it comes from China. Uh, but there are other places in the world like where you can, mines, they're out of zinc mines. Zinc mines. Yeah. And now you don't use indium at all anymore? No, we just use silver. Only First silver of all, which you can find all over the world. Correct. And we use so little silver that it is not about the silver itself. It's the properties of silver that makes our product awesome. But the amount of silver in the, uh, in the ink is not uh, a, a very significant. It is, uh, it is a technology behind making wires out of silver. That's really the cool aspect of so it. So you would sell this, a bottle like this, yep. and people will need the technology to make them into wires? Uh, no, there are already wires in the ink. They're suspended in the ink. So what you do is when we sell this uh, material to our customers, they quote that material on uh, plastic, uh, this is PET material, uh, in rolls. So this already has a coating of the silver nanowires in this. And the reason I have these two little colored uh, uh, things there behind it is so that you can see uh, it's very transparent. Right? It's well over 90% uh, transparency. It's probably one of the most transparent conductors in the world. And you can uh, not only see um, what is behind it, it is also extremely thin and light. You can feel this material, it's very light. Okay? Glass will never get to be this light. 
and it's uh, the because it's thin you can make devices a lot thinner so imagine uh, laptops and monitors and everything becoming thinner and lighter too so it's about over 40% lighter and over 40% thinner if you substitute glass with so this Cambrius material. Cambrius is in here. Cambrius material is already coated in this. There's silver. There are silver strands which are sort of like this there. And you can see it because it is so small and it is a random scattered uh, uh, percolate network. So the, the, the wires are all interconnected but there's a lot of gap between the wires so you can see the light coming out. Is it That's like why it's 99% like gap or correct? Or more yes. Or? So there's how much does it cost per meter, or how does it work? Um, so uh, this material by itself cannot be used uh, in a device. It goes further integration. I will show you the rest of the process, and then uh, I will uh, finally explain to you the cost okay. aspect of it as well. So here you have uh, foam with Cambrius inside. Yes. So the silver nanowire uh, 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 film is on this phone and it's a transparent conductor to enable the touch function. When this phone was launched by NEC through the NTT Docomo network in Japan, this was the world's thinnest phone about a year ago. And uh, the reason it's thin is because the silver nanoware material uh, on, on uh, film, PET material, is very thin and it's very light. And this is a very high-end phone. It has a TV tuner, it's a beautiful display, it's got all the functionalities of a high-end smartphone. At the same time, um, Cambrio has also won uh, designs in China for feature phone type devices, uh, smartphones with you know not as many features. But we were picked for the exact same material, uh, but because we were very cost competitive. As you can imagine, phones are very cost sensitive devices, and being that it's a consumer device shipped in millions of units, they tend to be very cost sensitive uh, as an industry. And we won both designs, one because of the uh, optical features and the benefits of our technology other purely on cost. So this means Cambrios is shipping in like big volume? Uh, buckets of ink if you will. Buckets of ink? Yes. But potentially millions of phones already? Yeah, we have lots of devices where the product is already being launched and I will uh, give you some more examples of different devices. Does um, your technology uh, means it looks better? Our technology means that it is there is more transmission uh, so the display looks better. We make the display look better because our material is on the top. We don't uh, reduce the light uh, from the display. Uh, we provide the best transparent uh, conductor material, but also response, right? Because of our um, uh, material has very good conductivity, the response to the touch screen is pretty cool. So amazing response and better. When people say IPS and when they say all that stuff, actually gets even better. Well, the IPS or FFS technology, yeah. or whatever technology is employed, is all great. And if you put uh, a not so transparent material yeah. on top, you're going to lose a lot of benefits. That's what they do. Exactly. Ex so that's what they were IPS, doing. they have IPS, but they put sheets of stuff that makes they it They were worse. putting indium tin oxide material or some other technology, which was reducing the light going into the, uh, or the light coming out of the display. Now we have enabled a really pretty cool product with a transparent conductor. Cool. So uh, do you have other? Uh, yeah, I'm going to show you some other really cool stuff. So this is a very small uh, yeah. device, right? And we are very successful here. And, uh, but any size, anything? Like this is just uh, yeah. anything. So when we make this uh, material, the ink, and it's coated on sheets like this, you can cut the sheet into a small display or a small touch screen, or you can cut it into much larger. Again, this is just a sample. You can actually coat this on very wide material, maybe 1.5 meter, that sort of a thing. So you can make very, very large touch screens. If you and so this is just a question of cutting. Yeah, well, not, not cutting like yeah. that, but maybe cutting it through lasers. But yes, okay. so you, you got the point. Whatever size you want, it's nothing to do with the resolution behind and all that. Correct, because uh, we can, uh, the material is suitable for any display, any resolution. Uh, you, you can put them uh, in different configurations of uh, uh, touch screens to enable different technologies to uh, flexible flexible absolutely uh, I you know this material is flexible right here this is the actual material with our silver nano wires and silver these are crystal silver it's very ductile so we have customers that have taken this material and rolled it uh, and unrolled it uh, like hundreds of thousands of times and it's worked fine so it means that Cambrius is going to enable Flexible displays. The flexible displays that people have been waiting for. Yes. 
much better than anything else? Much better than anything else. For sure. So, absolutely. Nothing that can compete in the flexible. I will show you examples of products that have already been built. Uh, E-paper, a uh, subject we are both very familiar yeah. with, uh, and we are both fans of the technology. Uh, there is an e-paper device with silver nanowires already on them, a flexible device, and I'm going to show you a video. Wexler? Uh, the not the Wexler one, okay. uh, but uh, the, uh, I'm not talking about a device that's just flexible. I'm talking about a device that's rollable. Rollable, okay. Right, so you ro roll and unroll many times. Nice. And ITO, being brittle, will crack, yeah. whereas this material will remain fine. Wait. So, so what, is, what are you showing here? So this is a touch sensor, and typically a sensor like this would be used in a laptop or other types of devices. And um, it has a... Um, cover uh, uh, lens here and uh, our material. Our material is on a uh, film, so it is extremely light. Uh, otherwise, you would use two pieces of glass that will make it very thick and also very heavy. And uh, <laughs> there's the best way for you to gauge is hold this and you can see how light it is. So, so there's glass and there's Cambrios. And there is Cambrios film with uh, uh, two layers of our material that will enable a uh, projected capacitance touchscreen. But it feels like just one. It feels like one. And w the other beautiful thing about this is you can't see the pattern. You may see my fingerprints, but you're not going to see the pattern. So you can hold it against light and you can see if you can detect any pattern on it. Uh, all you're going to see is some of the dirt in that window, uh, or you may see my fingerprint. Uh, and you may see the fingerprints of our uh, head of sales, Dave, uh, or <laughs> some other people, but you're not going to see any pattern on this so material. There's glass and there's this. There's glass and there's that uh, PET material with um, two layers. Of so what are you showing there? So with large monitors like this one, this is made by LG. This is a, actually it's not a monitor, it's an all-in-one computer. <coughs> In these kind of devices, in the past, they would use two sheets of glass. Makes it very thick, makes it very cumbersome. Uh, this has to be somewhat portable, right? Even though you're not uh, moving it yeah. from your desk a whole lot. But it makes it much lighter. And you have a touch screen functionality. This type of film-based touch is not possible with ITO. It's possible with our material, because our material is very uh, good conductor. And you can do 10 finger touch. Now I'm going to just go ahead and ruin your <laughs> website name by uh, drawing a 10 finger touch. And you can see it's, it tracks very well. You're welcome to try it. it it's it absolutely. Tracks better than anything else. It tracks better than anything else because it's all you're rubbing your fingers yeah. on a material uh, beneath which there's a layer of silver nanowires from uh, Cambrios. Is our clear on material that is an awesome conductor, and you can also see that it's fairly bright and it does not uh, uh, restrict the light coming out of the display. So this is shipping? It is shipping. Uh, we actually purchased this uh, at the Fry's store. <laughs> uh, Fry's in Taipei? Uh, no, not in Taipei. We, we yeah. bought uh, this either in Japan or in the US. So here's a more like industrial use? Industrial uh, uh, kiosk uh, type device for point of sale application. Uh, unlike consumer devices, this undergoes a lot more rigorous testing in terms of the product performance. And the silver nanowire material is very suited for this type of application, where you have a fairly larger area uh, projected capacitance uh, touch screen on a device that's got to be rugged. It has to pass all the certification, and uh, you can use it in kiosk type application. Or you can use them in gas stations and uh, for point of sale and those kinds of uh, devices. So it makes it better for like consumer device when you want to have a screen that's as good as if there was no touch correct so you you don't want to have all these w too many reflecting lights and stuff that helps your technology yeah so um, it, it, the most important thing with a lot of these devices is there's a backlight behind the LCD and the backlight already loses a lot of light during the different uh, layers in the material you want to make sure that the transparent conductor does not hinder the light uh, it uh, is very transmissive and also very conductive. And those two things, um, those two combinations are hard to achieve with other technologies. We've done a pretty decent job uh, so, with our so technology. It, these screens will look better at conferences where there's lots of spotlights and stuff. They look much better than different technologies. Right. Much. In any technology um, that is employed in front of an uh, uh, LCD that has got a backlight coming, uh, with the light coming out of the device, you just want to ensure that you're not 
uh, reducing that light. When you reduce that light, uh, if you crank up the backlight, you're going to consume more power, or if you, uh, or you're living with much dimmer uh, display, and we are able to enable a much better performing product. And then for that one, it would look better outdoors, I guess. It'll, it'll, outdoors. It will look better outdoors, and much more important, it'll survive the uh, temperature range and all of the tests that are done in a rugged industrial type setting. So I'm going to give you some more examples here. Uh, this is a monitor made by LG, and it has the clear ohm um, uh, material-based touch sensor on it uh, and a projected capacitance uh, touchscreen. And I'm going to show you uh, examples of why this technology is superior to anything else out there in the market. So here's a chart that compares the light transmission, and obviously you want to have as much light going through as possible. Ideal would be 100% and then the sheet resistance. The sheet resistance, the lower the sheet resistance, the better conductivity the material has. So if you look at all of these different competing technologies, there's metal mesh, there's carbon nanotubes, there's speed art, there's nanobuds, there's graphene, so on and so forth, including ITO, which is the incumbent in the market, you can see that our material has the best transmission and also has very low sheet resistance. The incumbent technology, ITO, you can see it in a film-based um, uh, uh, material, it doesn't even go past the less than 100 ohms per square uh, in performance. So uh, if you want to use an ITO material on film, um, you're restricted to much higher resistance and therefore not so suitable for larger area So what uh, you're devices. showing here in this graph is all the competitors, yes. main competitors in touch technology competing in uh, uh, transparent conductor technologies so all those that goes on capacitive correct uh, and the best one would be the one towards the top left corner correct the best yes so of all the technologies you can see whichever technology has performance closer to that hundred percent now remember in this uh, chart we've taken out the base material the base material will also have some uh, optical property. If you take out the base material and compare all these technologies purely on the uh, merits of that technology rather than the base material, because the base material, there are many types of base material. Uh, we've often seen images like this where somebody puts our material on a PET substrate, compares that just with their material pure without a base, and then uh, the data gets skewed. But this is a much more so of a... Kind of like doing a benchmark. This is a benchmark. And doing a benchmark without the base material, which is... The glass Usually PET, it? which is uh, uh, the plastic uh, material that I showed you. All right. And there's how many kinds of base materials are there? Like there are several. Uh, well, glass is a base material. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, this type of PET. There are different grades of PET depending on the device, which is higher performance versus lower performance. I'm also going to run through a few more images here for you to uh, give you a feel for the technology. Uh, so we make silver nanowires. Uh, that's what it looks like when the material is coated and then dried. And on the film, you have these nanowires. Uh, and I've already shown you this. There are a lot of benefits with this technology, which is what makes it uh, very interesting in the marketplace. And most expensive. It is very inexpensive uh, r relative to ITO in uh, these kind of large Go area to touch. It's inexpensive compared to all the other ones? Um, so many of the other technologies are still in the lab. Right? Oh, yeah. So we are shipping products. You can actually go to the store and buy these devices. So if you take any product launch, you have uh, a, a design on paper. Then you have some prototypes. Then you have pilot. And uh, you go through different stages for a customer to qualify the product. And finally, you're in some kind of... Um, uh, production and then uh, a consumer devices launch and you go through the full feedback of consumers using the device and letting manufacturer know what they think of the performance. We've gone through that entire thing with multiple devices in different markets in um, uh, uh, North America as well as Europe and Asia uh, with these devices that uh, have gone through that full cycle. Then you get experience having crossed hurdles at every step of the supply chain and uh, every step of that process. So ITO, um, what do you mean incumbent? What does that mean? Incumbent means basically ITO dominates the market. That's the first That's the technology everybody's using, everybody's now. using now. And the challenges with ITO are on a large device like this, uh, you cannot make ITO on film. So you have to make ITO on glass. And when you make ITO on glass, it makes it 
thicker, uh, it is heavier, so on and so forth. And also for flexible displays, as you know, there's a lot of promising flexible displays technologies coming out in the marketplace. ITO won't cut it because it's brittle material. If you bend it, it'll crack. Whereas um, the silver nanowires are being ductile, you can roll and unroll, and it will uh, last for a long time. So I'm going to. Uh, this is the way a product uh, is sold in the marketplace. So our company was founded in 2002 by scientists from MIT and UC Santa Barbara. So we operate out of Sunnyvale, California, which is where we uh, do our design, R&D, manufacturing, uh, and so on and so forth. We make clear room inks that are sold to companies that make film. They go to Mon Film, and then they supply it to the touchscreen makers who in turn supply it to the ODMs. And that's typically how the supply chain works. And we enter the supply chain similar to the incumbent ITO material, so that's why we are adapted. Um, we have a number of very strategic investors, uh, including the companies mentioned here on this list. We have a strong IP portfolio. There are, so there's uh, uh, dozens of companies trying to get into the space with different technologies, and some including uh, silver nanowire type technologies. And we have um, not only a very good solid product that's already in the market, and uh, very good reviews, probably um, all of the feedback that we've received from customers is we are the best performing product in the market. Plus, we have a very strong portfolio of patents to protect all of our uh, intellectual property. Okay. And what is the last line? It says uh, AIOs. AIO is all in one computer. Okay. Right? All in one is uh, what that acronym is. Phones, AIOs, tablets? Uh, and tablets as well. Uh, and we didn't list tablets here in this uh, particular uh, example because as we work with different customers, um, these are the types of products that have been launched. Uh, we have customers um, that are looking at uh, designing number of different devices using our technology. Um, so our product can pretty much go into any type of application. There is really no restriction. So I'm gonna uh, flip through a couple of more uh, um, slides and give you some of the advantages. Uh, faster response, because it's silver, it conducts uh, uh, better. Uh, so we can enable these larger devices. Higher transmission, so uh, light gets through much better compared to other technology. It's thinner, lighter, stronger, right? And uh, it's cost effective. So usually in the market, you have a technology that's got high performance, typically it's all the higher cost. Uh, we actually have a technology, it's not only higher performance, it's actually lower cost, it's which like is pretty a, awesome for the market. That's like, a, what's it called, a jackpot? <laughs> it is like the jackpot, yes. Um, and we've shown some more examples. Uh, I mentioned to you a uh, almost a feature phone type device where we were picked because of the cost advantage of our technology. And this is the NEC phone that I showed you earlier. Uh, we also have the Intel reference design image there along with the LG monitor and all-in-one uh, computers uh, as well as the G-Vision 15-inch uh, point-of-sale uh, kiosk monitor. Um, I'm going to show you some other advantages of our technology here. So to make a product, uh, it's not just the piece price of the material is lower compared to ITO. It's also lower to actually make the product. The process of making the product is significantly lower than incumbent technology. And then once you make the roll-to-roll uh, -roll, uh, material, the, uh, uh, the coated material, patterning it also is a lower cost. And then the total stack is also a lower cost. I'll give you more examples. Before that, let me show you a comparison with another technology that is also coming into the market. It's called metal mesh. And this technology, uh, where there's a mesh that's put on top of the um, uh, display, and if you have three different laptops or monitors or tablets or whatever devices, if they have different resolutions, uh, that metal mesh technology needs to be adapted to these things or you will have a mismatch and you will have what is known as a Moray effect. And this is simulated. Uh, we pulled this off of the web and you can see that there's a simulation on what that might look like. And uh, uh, with our technology, we don't have this issue where we can use our silver nanowires. That is literally an image of our actual product. These are silver wires that's taken with the uh, electron microscope and uh, you can use that exact same material for all of these with no changes. That's nice. So, that's so it one makes layer it of what comes out of the... Correct. 
it, it, it is easier for folks to manage inventory and uh, also for designers, they don't need to be worrying about different designs for each um, type device. Um, and I'm also going to show you a, another example of how a traditional ITO touch sensor is built in number of steps versus fewer steps with our material. Right? So in an ITO touch sensor, you first take an, uh, uh, you know base layer with the ITO deposited on it and you put a resist on top and you pattern that resist and then you etch away the extra material that you don't want and uh, uh, you have um, a, 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 a material where uh, you still have the resist on top that you need to strip away and those are five steps that creates one layer. Right? And then you need the dielectric material that will separate the bottom layer from the top layer, which also has five steps, and then you repeat these exact five steps or, uh, or that you were done originally with the first layer to create a second layer. So there are 15 steps with ITO. Now watch this. Voila, look at our material. Using the Hitachi transfer film, we take a substrate, we put the transfer film laminated on it, and we pattern it. Once it's patterned, we put um, a second layer on top, and we can use the uh, targets from the first layer to align the second layer very accurately. We pattern the second layer, we are done. Five steps versus 15 steps. It's faster, it's less chemicals, uh, uh, that's how you save costs, not just on the material itself, but also on the process and steps. Each of these steps are not, none of these are harder than the other steps or anything like that. This similar steps? It is very similar steps, and in many cases, you're using similar types of equipment as well. To, uh, to do these things. So um, so we are basically enabling a number of different markets, not just touch screens alone. Touch screen is where we got our start, but we our, our material also suitable for 3D TVs. When 3D TVs uh, become prominent, we, we'll have a very big play here, flexible display because our material is flexible. OLED uh, uh, lighting, uh, where we can replace the anode with our material. Uh, for solar cells, the exact opposite. Here it's emitting light, there it's capturing light and converting into energy where we can use our material as flexible a solar uh, solar kind of cells. flexible solar cells. And also for automotive type uh, uh, designs where the display will be uh, bent and it won't be a flat display. In this example, uh, this is a device that was created by AUO. It's an e-paper device. You can see the, uh, the display is actually switching and changing images. Um, and it has the Cambrios uh, Clearome material in it um, as the electrode that uh, is being rolled. So uh, here's a chart from uh, one of our customers, uh, Nisha Printing, that was able to show that when you make a flexible display with our material, uh, even after um, 100,000 um, times uh, of uh, bending, and uh, rolling, uh, the resistance remains flat. The first line here is um, the, uh, uh, the resistance for the inner uh, uh, side of the, uh, of the display, and the upper one, uh, 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 the, the second graph is for the upper one, where you can see the resistance changes, but bounces back and comes back to normal once the display is uh, done rolling and it's flat again. So the, the the silver, uh, what do you call it, uh, nano nanowires. Nanowires don't get displaced by being flexible. No, so they stay exactly where they need to be. Correct, and uh, you, we've, they've done this test a uh, hundred thousand times, and uh, it still functions very good. And here's how the test is done. That is an example of that. Uh, we also play in OLED. We are able to uh, create OLED lighting, replacing the anode uh, in this particular example. And we are also in the flexible and transparent uh, uh, organic photovoltaic um, cells, where again, the benefits of the flexible uh, uh, substrate uh, and the flexible material from our side, uh, along with very good uh, conductivity is necessary. So these are some of the advantages of the technology, and we believe that in the uh, next uh, uh, near future, we will replace um, incumbent material in a number of uh, devices, as well as enable some products that cannot be built with uh, existing technologies, and we will enable some of the newer products, whether it's flexible displays, uh, flexible solar cells, uh, and uh, lighting with OLED. Can we see this, how soon, how, how many devices, where, where how, is, 
Uh, do you expect really that every phone is going to have it, like next year, or what, what do you think? Uh, so there are already phones in the market. There are already monitors in the market. There are um, uh, all-in-one computers, and uh, uh, we are in the process of shipping into a number of different devices. But with any new technology, we are going after those applications where we have the best fit. And eventually, we will be able to go after um, uh, uh, opportunities where we can replace the incumbent with just the benefits of having a better conductive material, better performance, uh, and um, enable the devices look better. Uh, we are f initially going after those applications where the inca incumbent cannot even play. For example, these larger type uh, devices where a film-based ITO uh, sensor is just not possible. And uh, so eventually, everything will have it? We hope so. But how, how, how much time does it eventually take? Um, because uh, the incumbent technology, ITO, okay. has a lot of existing established infrastructure, it will take a few years uh, in uh, many of the mainstream applications. But many of the newer applications, they're starting out with our material, so we will be able to get a fairly large share of these newer products being launched in the market because the expectation is touch everywhere better performing touch, lower power because it's got higher transmission. These are the kinds of things that are driving the market. Is it possible for consumers to target uh, getting a device with this? I mean, it doesn't say in a spec sheet. Some, it doesn't have to say it. Or That's what we would do eventually, where um, consumers will be able to identify devices that uh, clearly says it has uh, got a Cambrio's ClearOM um, based sensor on it and they know that there are uh, certain benefits that come with that. So you could technology. say IPS Plus with ClearOM, or you <laughs> could say FFS with ClearOM. Absolutely. Yeah. Flexible displays with ClearOM. All right, cool. So that's very cool. Thanks, uh, very interesting, and uh, thanks for the tour. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you.